Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to Hurdlers of Adversity, uh, Inspirers and Maximizers of Pivotal Moments. My name is John Register, and I am so excited for you to be with us at this special time. Now, this is October, October's Disability Employment Awareness Month in the United States. And it's just a phenomenal time just to talk about individuals with disabilities and what they bring into the work environment and the workforce. So all this month on this show of Hurdlers of Adversity, we are featuring those individuals who are really great in this space, who are really pushing in this space to help all of us uh, have a, a global workforce. We know that we're working globally right now. Um, I just just come on board. I want you to, to get in here. I'm looking at the, it's the numbers right now. I know that people are coming. We, I, I think um, LinkedIn Live had some problems last time where we couldn't see comments. Uh, so hopefully they got that challenge fixed, but I'm looking over there. I know we're on a little bit earlier because we have such a special, a wonderful guest that's on today, all the way from the United Arab Emirates with us. And so I want to make sure that we um, that, that she didn't have to stay up too long this evening <laughs> and we don't keep her too, uh, too much as well. We do want to hear from her and everything that's happening. So put in the chat box. Where are you streaming in from right now? We have a two for today, right? So we have our guests which I'm going to introduce you to right now and then come back again at 312 in the afternoon, mountain time. Uh, uh, that's 512 on the East Coast for our conversation with John Kemp, who founded the American Associations of People with Disabilities. Uh, and he's also the president of the Discardi Center on Long Island in New York, New York City. So we want to make sure that we are doing that. So if you're coming on board and you don't know who I am and why we're doing these programs, just let me give you a little bit of background on myself. Uh, at 529 in the afternoon on May 17, 1994, I was one of the fastest 400 meter hurdlers in the country, top 20 in the world. And USA Track and Field News had just picked me to be one of the ones to watch, possibly to make the 1996 Olympic team in the 400 meter hurdles. But on that same day at 5.30, I went across a hurdle, dislocated my left knee, severed the artery behind my kneecap, and then uh, seven days later became an amputee. And so what do you do in that moment? Well, it's really who you have around yourself. And I had my wife, Alice, my son, John Jr., my parents. And it was Alice when I was in my lowest moment trying to understand who I am and how I'm going to show up It's not this new identity. She says, you know what, John, we're going to get through this together. It's just our new normal. And so with that, hey, what's up, track fam? What's up, Bon Ware? Thank you for jumping in. I appreciate you. Um, so with that, I wound up um, creating this new normal mindset, uh, right? When John Jr. jumps off the swing and comes running over, he says, hey, dad, you see my big jump, dad? And in that moment, he he validated me as his father and he created his new normal. That's what I believe we have to do. It's And the new normal, I define it not as a as a destination that most people say, well, welcome to our new normal, or let's wait till things get back to normal. No, the new normal is only a plateau by which we get to grow. And when we grow, I started swimming for physical therapy. 27 months later, made the Paralympic swim team. Who knew there was a Paralympic Games? And then from there, I wound up uh, having an artificial leg made for running. And four years later, won the silver medal over in Sydney, Australia, becoming the first um, am American amputee to jump over 17 and a half feet without a leg or a knee. And it's all about now its legacy. Syracuse, welcome in the house. Thank you. Uh, Secaucus, I'm sorry. Secaucus, New Jersey. Thanks for welcoming in uh, today. We're having a great conversation with a, a, just a beautiful human. And we, I, I just can't wait to get to that conversation. I'm just kind of sharing with everybody right now kind of why I do these, these shows. So I, I get a chance now with kind of my business and inspired communications international to travel the world you know outside of you know post covid pre covid whenever we're going to get back to traveling who knows that uh and and get a chance to meet amazing individuals and these individuals just inspire me because i believe that inspiration is a catalyst to motivation motivation in turn causes actions actions lead us to transformational results and these results they re-inspire us or allow other people who are watching the process to catch the vision. What's up, Tracy? How you doing from Arkansas? Thanks for being on. I hope that you've been talking to my daughter about the attorney stuff, and hopefully you're having some, some great conversations there. Uh, so caucus in the house. Arkansas is in the house. We got track fan. Bon, where, 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 where are you coming in from today? Let me know that. Put that in the chat box as well. If you're joining with us on all the stream channels, Facebook uh, is in my 
personal Facebook account, which is the our Amputate Fear group that we're having an amazing conversation. So that's going on right now. We have YouTube. YouTube Live is happening and LinkedIn Live as well. So I want to know where you're, you're where you are tuning in from right now on this live stream. Okay, so let's let's kind of get into it because uh, we this is Disability Employment Awareness Month, and I have an amazing guest that's on right now. She's holding by, standing by, ten hours ahead of us right now over in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. I think that's where she's, where she's at in Abu Dhabi. And so um, she is the first Emirati that is board certified, certified behavior analyst, and an autism expert. She is uh, holds a master's degree in psychology, applied behavior analysis, uh, has amazing projects that she does. But here's, here's what I really want to share with you. We were over at this coffee shop when I was had a visit with the United States um, our our embassy, and was over in Abu Dhabi and in Sharza and in Ras Al Khmer and as well as um, uh, Dubai, and so we had a great conversation with the program that she put together with these incredible women uh, that were um, having uh, challenges or coming together as for strength with children with disabilities, some of them living with autism, and I, I was able to have my wife come with us, and I was so awestruck with this woman because she just had so much grace and poise and was so had so much passion around this work and really increasing the opportunity for people with disabilities over the United Arab Emirates. So without further ado, let's jump right into this conversation and bring her on board. This is Miss Sharifa Yatim. Thank you so much for being on, Sharifa. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, John, for having me. I am really looking forward to our chat. And it's been a while since we've seen you. So um, it's really nice. So thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And so I will, I will say to you, Salam Alaikum. Alaikum as salam. <laughs> so I, I, I pushed my Arabic out there. A bit. You're doing fantastic. I'm really impressed. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, as we get into this conversation today, and you know, over here it's Disability Employment Awareness Month. You know, we we had that conversation, which was really it was awe inspiring. It, it showed me so many different things. It, it kind of uh, it was it kind of validated why I, I wanted Alice, my wife, to be in the room too. You know, share a little bit about that that meeting and what you know as what that was all about for you and in, in in your in your terms before you kind of get into your backstory of why you came into this work in the first place. Right. So I just want to say, first of all, um, I want to thank you and your wife for coming all over from the U.S. to the United Arab Emirates and Abu Dhabi, the capital. And um, you know what? We were so excited to have have you and your wife to share your experience and open your hearts, you know, really to talk deeply about your experience and um, some of the lessons that you learned through your experience. Now, when the Special Olympics in 2019, they hosted the Special Olympics in Abu Dhabi in United Arab Emirates, and that kind of like pushed everything forward. And one of the agenda is to bring people like you so inspiring to kind of be a role model for many people to, to be mm. as strong as you are to talk about their experience. And having me involved was a huge privilege when the Special Olympics invited me to, to be with you and, and to chat with you and talk about that experience. So I want to thank them, the Special Olympics, and uh, for trusting me and allowing me to be part of it. So for me, in my own words, I am just so grateful, thankful that I've met someone like you and your family and you know so appreciative of, of those opportunities that's coming along in my journey well we i, I appreciate that we're gonna talk about you today and, and not me uh you know i i found that fascinating because there were some uh women that were there and i was learning about the differences and with, not with just inside of culture and where we are as well as similarities with the United States and and the UAE and in other parts of the world. And what I was discovering is, you know, there there's some things that that are constants. One is um, kind of these, you know, attitudinal barriers that that happen. And we have people just don't understand living life in somebody else's shoes. What what really caused you 
to get in this work. And, and I'll, 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 I'll pause right there just for a second to kind of clarify. Special Olympics are for those with phys, uh, cognitive disabilities and Paralympics are those with physical disabilities and visual impairments. So we don't, I don't want us to get the, the terms confused, but I want to make sure that, that I, I put that out there. So what caused you to get into this work with those in, in, the, in the Special Olympics population? Well, my story started from my volunteer work. Mm. And in our community, in the United Arab Emirates, we love to volunteer and it's part of our culture and part of our religion mm -hmm. that we do as much as we can with volunteer time and work. And through my undergrad um, education, I was volunteering and part of the volunteer is to fundraise, you know, for um, centers or nonprofit organizations. And that kind of just opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. And during my time in my undergrad, I knew that I wanted to get into um, the field of behavior psychology as um, as it's specialized and concentrated in applied behavior analysis, as there wasn't any um, Emiratis that are specialized in that field. Mm. Uh, to me, that's surprising because we do have the best schools. It's uh, you know we do have the best uh, curriculums and, and schools. And I graduated from American school here in the United Arab Emirates. And um, part of it saying, yeah, part of me was saying. Well, I got all the education, the language, and and um, you know the the ability to do so. Why not get into this field, not as a volunteer, but an expert in this field, and help professionally as well as my passion and volunteer work that I've been mm -hmm. doing, and still and still do. So it really, you know, grew from my volunteer work as a person that is just passionate about working in the community and listening to stories uh, from the community. And one of the biggest question was, if I want to get into a field, I want to get into a field that is needed in my community, something that people um, need an expert in and make a difference by the education, by the knowledge that I can gain and spread it as I'm a bilingual as well. So uh, fluent in Arabic and in English. So using that you know kind of characteristics and embedding it with giving back to the community giving back to my country is one of the fundamentals of why i got into this field and so was there a specific event around that that when you were doing your volunteering that kind of led you to to uh this demographic Absolutely. It's through the stories from mothers. And mm -hmm. I used to volunteer like in um, pediatrician uh, wards um, because I loved kids and I wanted to get into that field. I was I was still thinking, what am I going to do? What are the, the fields that I'm going to get into? Mm -hmm. And parents from different volunteer work were talking about their experience with their kids the behavioral issues that came with, um, you know, developmental disorders that came with, you know, uh, cognitive disabilities. Mm -hmm. And to me, um, you know, many of the families or some of the cultures in, within the families, they would think that the child is, is vegetated, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, his life has ended. And to me, that did not make sense since I've, you know, learned psychology and learned the behavioral psychology and applied behavior analysis that to me it was impossible because everyone can learn. And it's, it's just to me was a no brainer. And the questions that they were asking me, I personally wanted to answer yep. through education, through knowledge, through evidence-based practices. And so these stories, I always say to my friends and my families, never underestimate the work, the volunteer work that you do to learn what's needed in your community so that you can be an expert in, in that field. And so for, through these stories, the, one of the mothers I remember was saying um, her child wouldn't eat. So he had feeding behavioral uh, um, you know, issues. Another is uh, we had... A I met a mother that was saying, oh, he doesn't know how to play. He doesn't know how to be with others or in a school. And to me, I was surprised that that's it. That was for them, the families, for them, that was the end, the ending kind of thing. And you know, so I was determined to change that, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's, 
and I, I I love that because you have this passion that that just exudes from you right now in that space to change the the perceptions of what people were thinking about. So I'm, I was writing some notes. I was looking for my pen. I was like, oh, where's my pen? <laughs> I want to make sure I capture some of this. And I, I took down, you know, what you said is everyone can learn. Yes, and, absolutely. And if we start from that point that everyone can learn, then what is it about me that makes me think that this person cannot learn or learn like I learn? And right. I think, you know, oftentimes when I'm doing my presentations, what I'll say is that other people will often place on us what they believe we can or cannot do, yeah. which is based on what they believe they could or could not do if they were in our situation. And what you have done is you have really gone right after that and said, what are the possibilities of this individual that if you just took all the limits off would really increase them in their in their life and in your life and, and, and the lives of, of so many others that are around there? Because we have these stigmas. When you look at the stigmas that around in, you, in your work right now that kind of cause fear or, you know, I don't know if my child can go to school or, uh, or mm -hmm. play with others. Uh, how has that been? Have, have you seen a growth curve uh, from the, the people that you're working with from, I don't think that's possible to, oh my gosh, that's, that's really, that is possible. I see this and I hear this nearly every day as part of my job and my work. So I have my own consultation and part of it and emphasize the mission of my consultation is to first change the culture and perspective mm -hmm. before we start going like, okay, let's build that skill. Let's build skill one, two, three, or, you know, the first thing is how do you perceive your kid? What do you think your kid can do? What are the things that he loves? Do you know what your kid loves to do? You know, these kind of questions really digs into the, the perspective of what mm. disability means to that family culture. And of course, when we're talking about culture, we're not just talking about, oh, the country's culture. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the family's perspective, no matter where you're from, you know, the, the culture of how they perceive or how they were brought up to perceive individuals that are unique, that are different, that have their unique ways of learning. Mm -hmm. And so before starting anything, the first question is, what do you think about autism, let's say? Or what do you think of people that um, have disabilities or that you, they have unique uh, learning styles? And from that conversation and continuing that conversation, the parents get, they, they get more empowered, even siblings family members that are supporting their child or their sibling with special needs, they get empowered because now once they talk about it and label these more positive characteristics of their uh, member of the family, their culture changes. And now it's easier for us to implement things, implement behavior programs, implement, you know, um, prompting strategies and all that fantastic science behind learning. Uh, and which makes it more easier and they become more creative. Yeah. So that change of perspective, that change of the way you see your sibling or your child or your staff member, if we're talking about the Disability Employment Month, you change the way you think. When you change the way you think, you change the way you be creative. And when you're, you're more creative, you are more creative in opening the opportunities to meet the needs of that individual. Well, shukran for that answer. That that is that is great. Um, we are talking with Sharifa Yatim right now and just having a powerful conversation. She is in the United Arab Emirates right now in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I met her with my wife over in. Um, was it Abu Dhabi? Where, where were we? I, I, yeah, we were in we were in Dubai actually. In Dubai. I, yeah, I thought it was in Dubai, so I couldn't remember yeah. if it was Dubai or Sharjah actually. But um, but I remember it was a long ride, and I was tired. I was about to fall. <laughs> it was a long plane ride. It was one of the first rain that happened over in in uh, in the United Arab Emirates for a long time, and everything was flooded. Um, so we're talking with Sharifa, and if you're enjoying this conversation, I want you to put in the chat box, shout her out right now. If you're on LinkedIn uh, Live, it's at Sharifa Yatim, and just put her put her name in there and say, this is a phenomenal conversation. Put in there, everyone can learn. Everyone can learn. Everyone can learn. Put Sharifa Yatim with her name in there in the chat box so that we get a chance to, to tag her 
and the work that she is doing. I want to share real quickly with you um, and, and put on, on, the, on the screen right now her organization. So who we are right now. Talk a little bit about this slide right here. What's going on in this picture? Well, this is a picture where we did a, um, a documentary Mm. documentary about inclusion and uh, still not out yet but these were the choirs that we met it's a choir all of the members are individuals that are so unique in their own beautiful way yeah and i had the opportunity to hear them play beautiful classical music and this amazing harmony that I heard, it was so, I was so touched, but I'm hopeful that they will, the documentary will be out soon and we'll let you know when. And I was yep. like, you guys, we need to get together for a group picture. <laughs> and we all, and I was like, what should we do? And it was like, you know what? Let's all have happy hands, you know, and make that a normal thing. Happy hands, you know, that's something I've learned from my my friends and families that have autism with, with autism spectrum disorder where they flap their hands and kind of normalize that, that some some individuals flap their hands and it's okay. Yeah, and and I, I, we just called them happy hands. And everyone just did the happy hands, you know, the jazz hands. Jazz hands, right? <laughs> yeah, the jazz hands or happy hands. And they loved it. They loved it. And and we had some individuals on that choir where um, they were also on the autism spectrum. So they mm. were they were they're really good in, in doing those happy hands. So we were super excited to to and someone just not snapshot that picture. It was really nice. That's very it was nice. very yeah, it's very nice. I really love that picture. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a great picture, and it really shows um, the community, right? It shows that I feel connected, I feel valued, I feel wanted. What yeah. is it then that still kind of uh, irks you? Oh my gosh, can you just get over this, please? Just catch this vision. What is it yeah. that still irks you uh, about the work that you're doing? The, the logo that I've chosen, um, the slogan, as I uh, better, the slogan that I've chosen is "Everyone is special." Mm. So no matter what, when we when we name individuals special needs, yes, everyone does have a special need. Me wearing my glasses on now mm -hmm. is a way that I had to, you know, to change the environment for me to be able to see better. Mm -hmm. And so everyone has their own uniqueness and everyone is special in their own way. But there are some culture barriers in which I think it's not just you know, in our community, I think it's everywhere in the world in which opening opportunities is an important part for individuals with cognitive and developmental disorders. They, they do grow up, you know, they become adults. They too need to su survive and support their families. Yeah, just like how everyone does. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. So for me, you know, it's, you know, just, I just question that, yeah. you know, being part of the community when people feel like it's a burden or they feel like, oh, I, I need to do more, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, but you have to do it, whether you are a manager or a teacher or a family member, you have to do that anyways, whether they have a yeah. label or not. So that's the part where, you know, I just, you know, look at them with that blank face <laughs> you know, like, why aren't you doing that? <laughs> you know, so it's on to them. I mean, the policies are there. The laws are there. The regulations are there. It's like, do we need to get that, you know, stick to open opportunities? Do we need to, you know, give you rewards for companies that are inclusive? Do we need to do that? Or is it your obligation to open open opportunities for all. That is such a universal answer. <laughs> uh, we struggle with that still, e even here. Um, and there are some companies, uh, especially around dis uh, Disability In, which is a, a an organization that houses many different, you know, Fortune 500 companies, we may call them businesses that are looking at how they hire, retain, and promote people with disabilities, 
even on autism spectrum to to show up. Uh, we have uh, one of the the stalwarts of um, actress, uh, very vocal in this issue, Holly Robinson Pete. Uh, her son RJ is uh, is on autism spectrum and works for the the LA Dodgers, a baseball team out here. Um, and you know is, is learning how to drive and, and getting out and of course going through that whole process and oftentimes we just don't think in our minds what might be possible for individuals that might be living like that so you bring up a great point have you have you seen differences from like kind of from country to country or maybe I should ask the question uh, in the United Arab Emirates you know which I found to be you know very open and different you know different places you know different it was going from Going from city to city was all was fascinating to me because it's different vibes in different cities for sure. And I got a chance to visit four of the um, the, the Emirates. Uh, but do you find that it is different in how people um, either accept or what you're what you're sharing with them right now? Because you are the, the first to do this in the country, so you're probably learning a lot of lessons right now that can help not only the UAE but other countries as they begin this journey themselves. Absolutely. I've I've done a lot of international talks as well and met many people from around the world that have been in our situation um, for many, many years. What I'm really impressed, to be honest, within this short time of period, we're all like our country is only 45 years old. It's not very, right, very, right. very young, you know, and how much they've come from the way the, the culture has changed in comparison to countries that have been doing this for the past 100 years. Yeah. We've come a long way from from the the perspective of the perspective of families accepting their own kids mm. from communities from children in schools to com private companies now are are putting together strategies um, you know, laws and training packages to hire individuals with special needs. And to be honest, I haven't seen that, for, you know, the beginning of my career during my volunteer times. Yeah. If I go back to that time, I definitely see even the media changing media has a huge role yes. in normalizing the culture mm -hmm. you know and changing the culture so i think definitely i've seen a huge jump of the way people are um learning because it is a learning journey we're all learning from this yes. especially with individuals that are adults with special needs giving them the voice it's your turn now you don't need advocates like me. You need to be your own advocate. Talk about your needs. Don't be worried. Don't be shy. You can talk about these things. And part of my platform in my social media is that I kind of, you know, through the people that I choose or the people that I go through in my journey and the people I meet through my journey, I see those individuals with disabilities um, or with special needs or as we call them here in the United Arab Emirates, people with determination. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a formal name now. We've changed it from special needs to people of determination. And so uh, people with de determination, the ones that they do have a voice, but they're not heard, I try to make them be there and people to hear their voice use my platform as much as possible you know for them to to talk about it to say hey my needs are xyz even though they might have some issues with articulation or whatever you do your best you know so i think it, it, it we really changed in in a more positive way and i've seen a lot of people uh, coming up with amazing projects here and there, inviting me to their opening. It's just heartwarming to see this amazing projects coming up and starting up as well. We were with, um, I, I'm probably going to mess this up. <laughs> Her Excellency, is it Shama? Yes. Um, and had a fantastic conversation with her. And I, I think, you know, uh, as the, as the youngest 
minister uh, in the UAE. I found it fascinating, you know, to to look at. She was always she was telling me, you got to go to Abu Dhabi, check out the youth hub. You have to go here. You have to, and just so proud of in this short, you know, 45 years of the country, how far and inclusive uh, the country has been to kind of really push a lot of things forward and, and have the, uh, I guess, the, the the hindsight to look at what other people have done and then kind of get past those hurdles real fast to, to take those lessons learned quickly. And I thought it was it was really great, you know, in the conversation of what they were saying about how to train the next generation. So uh, if somebody is a president of an organization or in a, in a high office, then we want to make sure that two or three other people are being groomed for that position as so there's there's continuity. And I, I found that fascinating. So the, the question I have is around what we we struggle with here in, in the United States, and that is in the employment side of the house. Um, a lot of times individuals with disabilities won't be hired into the workplace. And so what happens is those that can, they will sometimes develop their own business. And so in the youth hubs, I was looking at all these businesses that were there. And is there a place by which we can have those that maybe have autism or those that have disabilities also be part of that youth hub and create an entire, a, 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 even a more expanded ecosystem? Is that something that you might see for um those that are living on autism spectrum or other people with disabilities inside of uh, the UAE? I love that idea. And I don't think there is any, you know, barriers for that. Absolutely. Our community here are very supportive for entrepreneurs that want to support uh, individuals uh, with the spectrum or other developmental disorders and or conditions. And you know, the year this year, we, we always in, the, in our country always have a theme. I don't know if the, you've come across it. Uh, this year for 2020 was the year of tolerance. Yes. And tolerance, what we meant was um, in Arabic, it's quite, it has a, a quite more deeper meaning than the English term, mm -hmm. um, which basically means you're respecting everyone's uh, uh, background, nationality, religion, needs, uh, uh, you know, language. And so building that theme changes culture. And I love that in, in what they've done in our leaders. I love it. And so I think, you know, it really pushes people to think out of the box. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you support individuals no matter where they're from, what conditions they have, what labels they have to be able to empower them. I think that's beautiful. And, you know, the youth hub, I've, I I usually go there sometimes um, for, you know, sit in, uh, in my meeting rooms or, you know, meet people there. It's a beautiful open area for everyone. And it's for free. So that's amazing. Yeah. I want to thank the minister Shema for, for putting all our efforts to do such thing for, for our youth, you know, and that's very important to support and have that space to, to think out loud, to, to brainstorm, to have the people around there, to have the connections uh, to support uh, the youth. It, it was powerful. Uh, and, and here's, here's what, here's what you don't know that this backstory, but um Here's what happened from the, I, I think it was, I was in Abu Dhabi and I went to the youth hub there at, 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 at uh, Her Excellency Shama's uh, <laughs> guidance. So I went over there and we had a, a, a program. So I, I made a program uh, and talked about some of these, these concepts we're, we're sharing today with a group of Emirati that had, had come in. And one man, gentleman, was, uh, had a, a soccer team. Um, and uh, so he was hearing about my concepts and coaching. So I kind of steered it to coaching because he was looking at how can this work for what I'm doing? So he, he started, he was kind of laid back at first, like, what's this guy talking about? Then he leaned in, like, oh, I think maybe I might be interested. Then he was all the way forward like this. <laughs> so I went over and talked to his team. Uh, the next, he asked me to come speak to his, 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 his team. So I, I did that. 
and just kind of encourage them. And we talked about leadership. We talked about how everybody has a voice, kind of like we're talking about right now. And everybody needs to be valued, accepted, included. And there's a leader that needs to kind of lead this conversation. And here's your leadership styles. And, you know, some people are kind of more authoritarian. Some people are more kind of lead by example. Some people are, you know, lead by committee. So you kind of got to figure out what your leadership style is. Uh, and then encourage everybody because you everybody has to know that the buck stops with you. So I did that, uh, and they were they were trying to win a championship, which I I didn't know. I was I, I was just kind of over there help helping out, and they wound up um, winning the next the, the, their match that night. And so they they all gave me a little video and said, "Hey, we won, Mr. John, we won our match." I said, "Great." So then I did another little video of what what that now means. The ceiling has to become the floor. So you have this this winning experience now. Don't get too high. Put that as the floor, and that's your baseline to actually elevate. Same thing with we're talking about children with disability, autism spectrum. We always what we we celebrate the win, and then we make the seal on the floor so that they can jump and go higher. Absolutely. So then they win, they win the next match, which is actually the champion uh, the, the, the the match for the championship match. And I get another message from the guy he says oh my gosh you're our good luck job we're winning <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> and then I, I so i gave him another video i said stealing becomes the floor and then this is how we expand and then i, I took something from what my wife always says and that mm -hmm. is when the, we get different competition and the competition goes up people start trying to pick at you and try to break the team apart so how do we then accelerate in, in that? And what Alice always says is you can always look for the weakness in the team by the fights that begin to happen inside of the team. They're not cohesive as a unit any longer. So when what you need to do is stay cohesive. They're always gonna, there's always going to be a bad pass, a bad play, a bad kick, a missed goal, a missed opportunity. But the faster that you can recover from that and stay as a family unit, the and the less likely the other team is able to do that, you will win the day. So then I get my final video that comes back from them, and I'm uh, and they <laughs> and, and Muhammad is uh, he's like, uh, oh, John, oh. <laughs> we tried our best, <laughs> and so he puts the the, the the captain on. He says, we 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 did what you said, Mister John, and uh, and we just want you to know, we won five zero. We won. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing! It, it was amazing, and uh, so I was just like, I'm just tearing up. I'm, I'm back in the states now, and it was just a phenomenal thing. And it just shows us, you know, kind of looking the, at the parallel of this, of if we begin to believe in each other, and we we have this year. I'll use your words in the year of tolerance, and that everybody is included, and that we're celebrating and valuing each other. We can rise faster. We get to go up. So just kind of wanted some of your, your your thoughts around that and 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 tell us, you know, what is the next thing? What is what's next for Sharifa? What's, go, what's going on uh, that you your vision of what what you want to have happen? I mean, I definitely want to continue to, you know, um, spread awareness in all the different Emirates. You know, as you know, we are seven different Emirates. So there's a lot of uh, awareness to do. And definitely, you know, continuing to talk about this and inspiring the youth to get into the field mm -hmm. and get into a career where they can uh, formulate opportunities for, you know, a specific population if the opportunities aren't there. Yes. And so I just want to continue to do that, inspire the, the new students, whether they're high, in high school or just starting college and they don't know what they're going to do. Uh, because no matter wh what degree you, you end up doing, you can always gear it towards inclusion and, in, in, and, and inspiring an inclusive community. No matter what you do, even if you're an architect or in communication or as a leader, you can still incorporate inclusion in, in your work. And I think it's very important that we continue to, to do that. And yeah, so this is really one of the biggest things that I inspire to do and uh, continue to empower families because the, the roots are very, very important. If, yes. the, if inclusion or inclusive is not applied, it's not only about talking about it, but applying it within your own four, world, four walls, within your where you sleep, you know, 
how are you going to change the world if you can't create an inclusive community in your own home? And so for me, that's so, so important to, to continue to spread that awareness and empower families. I love that. So I wrote down here, I was laughing because we have a, we have a saying here. It says, don't just talk about it, be about it. So we exactly <laughs> be about it. Yeah, exactly. Be, be about it. <laughs> so be about, about it. Um, one of my favorite uh, movies is a, is a, actually a cartoon movie. It's uh, it's called the Incredibles. I'm not sure if you have, have seen it. And yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite movie, right? <laughs> so I love it. Hey, you got, we have, uh, we have someone that's on that says, speaking to you right now, it says, uh, hello, Miss Sharifa, your team is such an honor to meet you. You're an amazing person. I love the way you are changing the world. That's from a Facebook user. That's awesome. So we just want to give you a shout you. out. Make sure that you are pushing her out, you know, um, wherever you are, uh, follow her and make sure that your network knows about this amazing young lady that's doing, as you said, absolutely phenomenal work. Um, so the Incredibles, right? Uh, we'll, we'll just get ready to wrap the show, but so th there's a saying in that says, when everyone is super, no one will be. Right. And I love that, I love that line because right. We're all super. We uh, and and right. you and you have on your on your site, right? You have this this picture. Uh, what's the? I want to try to get to it. What's the? It's, it's the the yeah. kid, right? I want to see the kid. There he is. Yeah, you yeah. Can you can. <laughs> and you I have the right that. to dream and and empower that to achieve those dreams. Right. You know, even though you, if if that child can't speak or can't have the right words, they show it, and you need to see that. Listen, listen properly. You know, and um, oh, by the way, John, um, I wanted to also mention something about an yeah. app that I created. It's called Tokenat. Can what is it called? It's, How do you spell token, it? Tokenat. I, I think if you scroll down on the on oh, my website, yeah. you'll find it as go, well. Let me go back to the website. Okay. If let you me can go just scroll there. down. Uh, keep going. Okay. Keep keep going. Going. Keep going. Yeah, technology. here we go. Okay, okay yeah. Here. Yeah, so yeah. we're learning through technology. And it's it's called Tokenat, T-O-K-E-N-A-T. And basically, it's just basically, it's based on a, um, a, a behavioral strategy called token economy, which is really cool because a lot of the kids uh, on the spectrum or other Anyways, with kids anyways, or not even kids, with adults as well, yeah. um, where they, they earn their um, stars, like it's a reward chart, and this amazing fireworks page comes out, and it gets <laughs> kids get super excited when they reach that page of fireworks, and they do their, their little, you know, happiness dance, you know, so... Um, a lot of the families, they just enjoy that. And I, I made sure that um, I kept it for free um, as it's part of my, you know, giving back to the community. And, and a lot of families are using it. I am really proud of it. I'm really proud of the team that put my vision into technology. And uh, I'm just so grateful. So for whoever wants to use Tokenat, it's free free of charge. You can download it on your Androids or iOS um phones mm -hmm. or tablets or you can use the website um button there visit the website you can get into the website and learn more about it so, so i just wanted to that, talk put that in the yeah. chat put that in the chat um it's uh sharifa yatim s-h-a-r-i-f-a-y-a-t-e-e-m uh dot a-e dot a-e for arab emirates and then make sure that you put that in the chat box so we can share this out this free app uh, that she's gifting to us. So thank you for that. And go ahead. I, I, sorry, I cut you off. No, absolutely. Thank you so much for the shout out. But uh, I definitely think that it can make a difference in uh, motivating your kids or, you know, the new learners, as we as as I call them, the new learners, and just to keep them motivated and make learning fun instead of, you know, uh, having it boring and, you know, using punishment. We kind of want to use a more positive approach <laughs> to make it more fun. And so creating that app uh, really Really kind of uh, changed a lot of the families that I worked with. Well, we are having fun right now. I got both multiple stars going off for you right now because this has been such a phenomenal conversation. Uh, uh, so we, we gave the website out. Is there any other way how people can find you 
and your work, yeah. work too? I'm on all so social media platform. I'm more active on Instagram. So if you find me on Instagram, just give me a shout out, follow, and just tell me that you've seen me in John Register's live stream. Would love to learn about what they are doing, what people around the world are doing, and learn what others are doing to inspire people around my community. So yeah, so everyone can follow me and notify me, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. So yeah, you can get in contact whenever. And on my website, you have my number and my email. So I'm very easy. Oh my gosh, you have my number out. Oh. <laughs> so anyone can reach me. I have no problem. I love to make friends. <laughs> that's that's so awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Shukran, shukran for your time today. Oh, I too. really appreciate uh, just wonderful blessings to you and your family and, and everything. Hope you all are safe. Uh, with this crazy environment that we're in right now. Uh, I had such a lovely time and wife, my wife, Alice, had such a lovely time in the UAE. It was, we had, we were, it was so hospitable. We just loved uh, every moment of it and, and can't wait to come back. So we're hoping the world comes back over and we're going to hold you. We're going to hold you to being our tour guide. When we come back to Abu Dhabi and take us all over the, all over the Oh, place. absolutely. I would love that. And please, I can't wait for you guys to come here and show you some more exciting things Let you meet some of my families. Oh, uh, my definitely. That would be a privilege and say hello to Alice. We really miss her so. here. I'll, I'll we miss you, guys. you hold the line. Well, I'll bring her down. We'll, we'll Absolutely. Her. I don't know if she's, you know, she may not have her hair and makeup, so she's not, <laughs> not, she's not coming on camera. <laughs> but if she does, she'll be on in a minute. Um, so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please give it up. Give the hand sh shouts out and, and hand claps for my guest today, Sh uh, Sharifa Yatim. And so we learned a lot of things. Everyone can uh, learn. That's great. Kind of overcoming our barriers, overcoming our stigmas around that. Uh, how do you push? How do you uh, get into a, a, a great society? You know, that's another thing we're talking about. And what does um, what what do your kids like to do? Ask them what to what they like. I mean, yes. that's anybody. Ask them what they like to do, which is which is great. We want to make sure that we're asking those questions because they they kids have different interests as do we all. So let's make sure that we're asking those right questions. Once again, shout her out in the chat box. Uh, I want to thank Sharifa for being my guest today. We're going to replay this, of course, on all the channels. I will pin this to the top of the uh, of my LinkedIn Live, as well as if you want to join our group in the Facebook group, it's um, www. Uh, www. Facebook. Com slash groups with an S slash amputate fear. So put that out there. Uh, come join us. We're having some amazing conversations in that room over where it happens. Uh, and then we have next week coming up, I'm going to actually head out to, uh, you're absolutely Tracy. You're very welcome. Uh, thanks for being on next week coming up veterans in business. So I got like, I'm looking at my board. I have like 10 speeches coming up in, until like November. And I'm, I'm, I'm probably late for another call right now. Uh, but it's, it's great doing this, these virtual environments, but it's also, I love being in the room, uh, with individuals and we, I did one, which was kind of social distance. It was, it was great just to feel that energy once again, but if we're talking to camera, we can also share our emotions with each other and really stay connected as we need to during these times. The IDEAM conference is coming up next week as well. Uh, we have John Kemp later on today at 312 this afternoon. Of course, he is uh, the president of the Viscardi Center. Uh, those children over there are just amazing, kind of more, um, more physically disabled population, but just incredible youth that are changing the world as well. So we're going to talk to him about uh, this whole ADA 30, American with Disabilities Act, and in Deem, the National Disability Employment Awareness Month, from his perspective, uh, he lives life as a quadruple amputee. So two arms, two legs are, are missing, but he's been a mentor of mine for such a long period of time. Just an amazing attorney, a, just a great individual. Uh, it'll be on my Zoom as well. We have uh, what's coming up here. We finished up PMI, uh, Property Management Institute, and NHE, which is, um, I forget what their, their, their name actually is, but NHE Property Manage Management as well. 
And so those are, have happened. Please join our Facebook group. And remember, as we get ready to wrap today, you are the inspirations. Inspirations are the catalyst to motivation. Motivation in turn causes actions. Actions lead us to transformational results. And these results, they re-inspire us or allow other people that are watching the, the process to catch the vision. So go forth and inspire your world today. We'll talk to you a little bit later on, um, on hurdles of adversity, uh, inspirers and maximizers of pivotal moments. God bless everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.